You know those beautiful gowns women wore with high necklines, long sleeves, and flowy skirts in the Victorian era? They looked so graceful and elegant, but have you ever wondered about the secret behind their glamorous attire? How did they manage to live and move in these huge dresses? How did they stay clean and wash those magnificent dresses? Let's not forget the most curious question. How on earth did they handle bathroom visits and menstruation while wearing such extravagant attire? Well, let's find out. In the early Victorian era, things were quite different from our modern comforts. Can you believe that sewers and flushing toilets didn't exist back then? Europeans had no idea about proper toilet systems like we do today. So, when nature called, people had to find whatever spots they could, whether it was in open fields, behind trees, or even inside their own homes. At night or during bad weather, they had a special container called a chamber pot. Chamber pots were the go-to solution for people's nighttime or bad weather bathroom needs. It was a simple portable container used for collecting urine and feces. These pots were usually made of strong ceramic material, like sturdy dining plates. In those days, things worked in an interesting way. After someone had to use a chamber pot and it was all full, they would put a lid on top of it. This lid was like a signal to let others know that it was already occupied and needed to be emptied. So, they would go and find a chamber pot nearby to use instead. It was like a little bathroom rotation to make sure everyone had a place to go. But not everyone had a chamber pot. For those without one, going outside to do their business was the only choice. Imagine being a classy Victorian lady dressed in beautiful gowns, exploring your neighborhood. Behind those charming houses, guess what awaits? Outdoor toilets, also known as privies. These were small wooden huts with secret bathrooms outside. People, especially those who weren't super rich, used them a lot. They had a wooden seat over a hole in the ground and everything would disappear down there. It might sound a bit strange to us now, but back then, it was the way of life. Just imagine how tricky and uncomfortable that must have been, especially for the women wearing those heavy dresses. Handling those huge Victorian outfits was quite challenging. Underneath those gorgeous gowns, women used to wear lots of special undergarments like chemise, slips, hoop skirts, and more. Each layer had a purpose, like giving support and shaping the dress. All those layers might sound like a lot, but the ladies got used to it and moved gracefully. Victorian women wore elaborate, heavy, and restrictive clothing, including corsets that constricted their bodies. These outfits made movement difficult and could be uncomfortable to wear for extended periods. Sometimes, they had help from maids or family members to dress and move comfortably. Wearing so many layers of undergarments and the weight of those elaborate dresses on top of them was indeed very challenging. Despite the difficulties, Victorian ladies carried themselves with grace and elegance. But can you imagine how the women of that time managed their restroom needs, specifically peeing and pooping? Using the restroom in public settings demanded modesty and discretion. Women had to be mindful of their surroundings and find ways to manage their voluptuous dresses while maintaining their dignity. In daily life, they used chamber pots. The chamber pots used by women were oval and designed to be held under the skirts of the crinoline instead of being squatted over. Some pots even had indented sides to fit snugly between the thighs. In private settings, a lady would simply lift her skirt and step over the pot to squat down. When at an event or gathering, there were special rooms set aside with several pots and maids to assist. The maids would lift the lady's skirt and position the chamber pot for her, providing a quick wash with a wet cloth afterwards. It might seem a little strange from today's point of view, but in those days, it was a clever idea that showed how creative and smart they were. Now imagine the cities of the time. They were quite smelly because people used to throw their waste out in the streets. It wasn't the most pleasant sight or smell, that's for sure. Can you imagine walking through those streets in your beautiful dresses and shoes? That's why high heel shoes and umbrellas were in high demand during that time. Ladies had to be extra cautious not to step on any unpleasant surprises left on the roads. The demand for high heels was partly to keep their delicate shoes clean and above any messy surprises. Umbrellas proved handy in avoiding stepping on debris, including human and animal waste, that was scattered on the streets. Keeping the umbrella above their heads offered a layer of protection against such unpleasant surprises. 
They relied on open drains and gutters running along the sides of the streets. Those open sewers carried not only rainwater, but also household and human waste, including urine and feces, which would flow through the streets. The lack of modern medical advancements and proper sanitation systems resulted in health challenges for women. They faced higher risks during childbirth and were susceptible to various diseases due to unsanitary living conditions. How did people in the Victorian era clean themselves after going to the bathroom? What did they use to wipe? Back then, they didn't have regular toilet paper like we do today. So, what did they use after going to the restroom? Well, they got creative. Some people used cloth, like washable fabric or old rags, which they cleaned and used again. In more rural areas, soft leaves were sometimes used as a natural alternative. Others had special sponges for this purpose, and in fancier places, they had something called a bidet, which helped with washing up. Things sure have changed a lot since then, and now we have our trusty toilet paper, the go-to for most of us. How did Victorians keep their heavy and long dresses clean? Laundry back then was quite a task, and was not done as frequently as it is today. People often had a special event called the Great Wash, where they washed their clothes only twice a year. Instead of using soap and water, they used a clever method. They sprinkled talcum powder on the dresses and then brushed it off. This helped remove any body odor, leaving clothes smelling fresh with the pleasant scent of talc. How creative, right? To protect their dresses from bugs, especially moths, they either hung them in a cedar-lined closet or carefully folded them in cedar trunks. Cedar's natural aroma acted like a deterrent for those pesky insects. Even though the quality, materials, and design of their clothing were impressive, they didn't wash their dresses frequently. They wore them until they were almost see-through or had an unpleasant smell. Can you believe it? And when it came to washing the undergarments, they could use soap and water for a clean. Interesting, isn't it? The Victorians had some creative ways of keeping their exquisite dresses looking their best while dealing with the challenges of laundry in their time. How did women manage their periods while wearing these heavy dresses? During the Victorian era, managing menstruation while wearing those grand dresses was quite a task for women. We can only imagine the challenges they faced without modern pads or tampons, so they had to rely on handmade clothes, pads, or fabric strips to handle their periods. These cloth pads, often made from soft materials like cotton or linen, were washed and reused. Shocking, right? To keep the cloth pads secure, some women used special undergarments or belts with loops. Another option were menstrual sponges made of natural sea sponges. Additionally, women wore sanitary aprons to protect their dresses from leaks. Talking openly about menstruation was considered taboo, so women had to be discreet and carry their supplies in concealed pouches or pockets. Can you imagine the effort and resourcefulness it took? Despite the challenges, they managed to maintain their daily routines and responsibilities with grace and determination. Their ability to cope with this natural aspect of life showcases their resilience and ingenuity during that era. We hope you found this video as interesting as we did. The Victorian women were truly remarkable in their grace and elegance, but behind those grand dresses were secrets that amazed us all. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a huge thumbs up. And for more amazing videos exploring fascinating historical topics, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and join our curious community. Thank you for watching. We will see you in the next 